watched um, Suicide Squad and uh, you know I I don't know like how to feel about this because I'm both you know a critic and a fanboy so I was full on fanboy today I brought my Harley Quinn shirt um, I brought you know I brought a couple friends to watch the movie so you know we had some fun you know we had some laughs and we went full dude when you know Harley was doing her thing um but at some point you know you gotta you gotta sit down and really think about a movie and um this is one where I think I think they were trying too hard now let, let me explain this to you. I don't hate DC. I love DC. I love watching Watchmen. I love watching um, I love watching the Dark Knight trilogy. I I loved watching um. The Batman movies. I loved uh, hell. I love. I actually like Batman v Superman in a more comedic sense. You know. Because even though, even though it was so, what the hell is going on? You know, there were so many good things in there that uh, saved it for me. And here's the one problem I I see across the board from uh, Zack Snyder, or at least this guy who was trying to direct more. Because this one I felt had more of the Zack Snyder print, as in the Watchmen. Uh, see, like transitions and the sequences that happened within the movie um, I think uh, a lot of it is very much a touch on the nose of like oh this is a comic book movie so the transitions are comic booky and it's both a blessing and a curse because it's a blessing because I love the visuals. I was like, oh my god, this is really cool. Like, maybe they could have played around with that a little bit more. Um, but here's the problem. Like, if I'm gonna, you know, reflect on Marvel, I'm gonna say this. I'm reflecting on Marvel because this is what DC is trying to do. They're trying to build their own universe. But they're just not doing it well. And it's because they don't have solid solo movies because if you remember Marvel didn't just come out with the Avengers first there was Iron Man and then there was a little bit of Captain America before Avengers I think or something like that and then you know there was connections with X-Men and things like that so they kind of already gave dropped clues to the fans to say oh you know uh, there's gonna be uh, universe and the first time they did uh, the Avengers it wasn't it wasn't spectacular you know I hardly remember the first Avengers I remember more of uh, Captain America Civil War maybe because that's more recent but to be honest I remember more of um, Age of Ultron actually that that that's not really um, uh, recent but it's more uh, memorable but is it is it you know is it like super good i'm not gonna say it's super good there were a lot of flaws in uh, both age of ultron and um civil war as well but i i i knew what they were trying to go with uh suicide squad because the backstory from deadshot um el diablo and uh, harley quinn was beautiful i was like yes this is this is good. This is what I want to see. Character development between... Okay, maybe El Diablo is in the main character, but I kind of knew going in, like, uh, Deadshot's going to be, like, the leader of the bad guys, but it's still going to be controlled by um, Ric Flair. So there's that. And then uh, Harley Quinn's um, backstory. I, I love the watermark. Like, the watermark transitions... That was so good because I'm like, yes, this is what I want to see in a flashback with Harley Quinn. But the problem is the Joker. 
I'm a big fan of the Joker. I love the Joker 100%. I love how he manipulated uh, Harley Quinn. I love how he plays his cards on the table very well. But this Joker, I'm sorry. I tried to enjoy him, but I'm like, I already, I already gave up. Like, cause my base was to watch Harley Quinn and. Um, really this movie you know did a lot of things quite well I was I was finding myself enjoying here and there um, the action sequences were slow the pace pacing was a bit slow but that's what you expect from this kind of early onset or rather I think DC is trying to do it in their own way so much that it kind of crumbles apart and to be honest, coming out of the movie, I want I want to watch um, Amanda Waller. Like, I really want to know what's her backstory. I really want to know why she's so obsessed with finding um, these bad guys to do her dirty work. I, I I'm sold. I want a I want an Amanda Waller um, movie, just like I want a I wanted um, a Batman movie now with Ben Affleck because he did quite a good job with. You don't, you don't want to do that in front of your kid, and that's all it is. <laughs> he just had one line, and uh, he jumped on the roof of the uh, the car, which I want. By the way, I'm like, oh my god, I'm so give me this car, I want it. <laughs> uh, but the Joker, hmm. I was trying so hard to defend Joker as well because I'm like, yeah, this is a good Joker, maybe, probably, I don't know. Uh, but I saw the flaws and I was like, maybe they're gonna fix it in post. Maybe the, he's not gonna have shit on his face and like damaged across his forehead. What the fuck? That doesn't like. That's so stupid. Like I'm like, do you really need to hammer it in to your fans? I like. The, I like the symbolism to um, Watchmen. I, I thought this movie really kind of resembled uh, Watchmen in a lot of ways, um, but it just didn't do it well enough. And even Harley Quinn, I was. I guess she met my par and nothing else, nothing more, nothing less. I just thought her accent wasn't, you know, more of. Hey, they're putting, you know, there, there's a style of it, and I think Tara Strong's voice is still the best of Harley Quinn, or, um, you know, just, I don't know, but Margot Robbie was really hot in this, as a guy, I have to admit that, but nothing else to go and say, oh, you know, she's a bad portrayal of women, blah, 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 or, um, no, she didn't do a the best Harley Quinn ever she had to work with the script you know she had to work with Zack Snyder saying no this is my best or David Ayer saying no this is the portrayal of Harley Quinn or this is the portrayal of Joker no no you're wrong and I'm right so I think there's definitely something there I'm trying to defend Margot Robbie because sometimes you know she did it really on the nose I'm like Yes, that's Harley Quinn, especially the dance club scene. I was like, yes, that's Harley Quinn. That's uh, that's a a crazy girl that you would want to party with and kind of, you know, think like, oh my god, she's the tragic story. But then again, you know, you fall in love with her, and I found Harley Quinn's story to be so tragic. I I literally almost cried when. You know, she, they almost went with the story that um, Joker died and, you know, he cut off his face and everything, but they didn't go with that. I don't know why. Um, but I was also a bit happy with that. Um, yeah, her, her, like, her back, like, her backstory made sense that, like, after that, like, she was, she, like, she had the vision of, like, uh, her paradise and, it's like him and her together. Oh my god, I'm I'm getting the feels now too. I'm like, wow, like I I legit like I almost cried in that scene. Um, what else? I have my notes here. Um, 
Oh, the villain. Uh, hmm. How best to describe the villain? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I haven't read Enchantress's comic. I don't know much about her but what I get from the movie is that she and her brother were kind of like these gods or goddesses or gods and goddesses uh, that were worshipped by the uh, people last time like in the past and now they want revenge because they don't feel you know they don't they don't they are not worshipped anymore or people don't fear them anymore and that's what happened and like she wanted to get revenge on the world because I don't know she wants people to give her more attention I guess uh, and they did they did the end they did the end credits sequence well I was like yes this is what I want I don't want Batman v Superman when it's like shoved in your face and the like, here have Aquaman or here have Flash or here have Wonder uh, or here have uh, Cyborg and here have, have this you know um, <laughs> um <laughs> sorry <sighs> fucking it's fucking Easter egg man. no like fucking Batman v Superman uh, anyway, this is not Batman v Superman. Oh, and it takes place after Batman v Superman, which is both a blessing and a curse as well. Because I'm like, no, it's a curse because th I think they should have kept in the line where they were. Um, Amanda Waller was like, um, uh, maybe these meta humans came out because of Superman, and Superman is dead. She did mention that, and so. In the movie, it didn't make sense why the Suicide Squad is there then, because like it's like what? So what? There's not many reasons. I think they should have kept the line in there to make it stronger. Um, back to the villain though. Um, I know I'm avoiding the villain because I don't know how best to describe this villain. She's Cara Delevingne, and that's about it. Like she did nothing much to <coughs> convince me that she was a villain. She was just Cara Levine who was trying to act as a bad guy and she failed. You know, I mean, she didn't fail, fail, but she failed in the sense that she didn't have clear motivation. She didn't really tell me much about herself all it was is like the romantic scene which I'm like what really if you're going with that again mm -hmm. okay um yeah but to be honest I was more interested in Deadshot and um, um El Diablo because I'm like yeah these, these two are are really well done like the the backstory again with them both uh, I was actually more invested in the brother I'm like okay I want to know more about the brother how come he's bigger than her and uh, how come I know like he's more powerful because he still has his heart with him or whatever like it was never really like excavated out or anything like so that's why uh, the brother is still there and uh, I thought the brother died pretty easily I mean like the file that uh, Amanda Waller gave uh, Batman in the end, I thought was like she was still there. So I'm like, mm, is she gonna come back? Um, yeah, that's the villain uh, storyline. <sighs> the storyline, wow. Hmm. Yeah, it's there. Uh, there's beginning, middle, and end. Um, I feel th the character development was stronger, which I, I, I actually appreciate more because uh, that's what I actually wanted to see is if they could do kind of like the um, reverse Avengers, I would say, or rather the Guardians of the Galaxy kind of way with um, uh, the bad guys and all that. Um, I actually enjoyed them as a team. I was like, "Oh, this is a this is a good team." Obviously, Will Smith. Obviously, Will Smith steals some scenes of his own, but 
I've come to, you know, I've come to accept that I'm like, yeah, you know, he's a big name, he's, you know, he'll attract more, but sometimes it's overdone in some scenes, but then again, I'm like, yeah, whatever, I don't really care. Oh, they stopped the movie just to go to a, a bar, which I'm like, there should have been more scenes, because not exactly them going to a bar, but like, more scenes to stop, because I felt that the action sequences were too much like it was too much in there like the ending i feel uh and i'm um, touching on the ending here a little bit but the ending was too slow-mo like there was too much of slow motion i was like nah you don't need slow motion i know i know what you're trying to go for it here but the much more uh tense for me would be um if it was all fast and we won't know if uh, it ever did uh, get a uh, hit of course it's dead shot so it'll definitely get hit the palm um, oh I came out of the movie wanting to watch a katana movie as well plus um, yeah plus from that uh, the plot yeah. uh, well it's as simplistic as you can get. I mean, you know, I'm not. I wasn't expecting more of it. Like, you know, I was like, yeah, they pretty much explained the plot in the trailers as well. It's about like bad guys doing good. So it's very much the Guardians of the Galaxy, the anti-hero plot thing. So yeah, character development on point. I thought that um, uh, um, the shot. Tardigan and uh, Aldia Blow got their character development in order. Um, Rick Flag, I also wanted to see a movie about him uh, because he did quite a good job, but like, I don't know, like, he's not there so much. Like, I want to know why he's so obsessed with this girl. Like, that's one of the things I think uh, I wanted to mo know more about. Like, uh, I guess it's the reflections of the Joker and Harlequin as well. Um, I have my notes here, so um, yeah. Oh, the humor was all right. The uh, action sequences, yeah. I already touched on that. Uh, yeah, the humor was pretty good. Like, um, I heard some laughter in the, the audiences. Of course, I laughed more because you know I'm a big fan. Um, and uh, I I really like that. He was, uh, he was really paying homage to Watchmen because there's literally a scene where uh, there's a shop and um, Deadshot is looking into the uh, the boutique and there's the little girl's clothes but what's there? A smile if you and I'm like... And you know, all along the, the line uh, in uh, Watchmen was um, Tonight, a comedian died like and it played back to me uh reflecting on uh joker dying perhaps but yeah i kind of guess it didn't die because i'm like yeah they're not probably gonna do that um and the problem with my country is uh, that they censored uh some of the words so it took it out of me a while so i was like yeah did you really need to censor that i mean it's pg-13 guys like like, high school is still on, like, don't censor it, like, censor it when high school's not, uh, not it, I don't know. <sighs> nah, my country is too conservative, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, like, I'm looking back at my notes and there's just not much. I think I would rank it higher than Batman v Superman though, because... They definitely tried a little harder. I would feel like they didn't just. They didn't just do, like I said, like in your face, uh, Easter eggs or, you know, they really, they really did the time. They really took the time to lay out some of their plans for the future. Um, I think. If you are really against Zack Snyder, don't watch this movie because you're just 
you're just gonna be depressed like after a while you're just like oh my god like this is so depressing um if you're not a fan of david ayer don't watch this movie because i even i at some point i was like oh my god can you shut up <laughs> like there was so much dialogue like and some of the dialogue felt a bit forced like batman v superman um but if you wanna watch Suicide Squad just cause there's a Suicide Squad I'd say go check it out because it's it was pretty okay like I don't know why it got 33% on Rotten Tomatoes as well but I don't want necessarily Rotten Tomatoes to be shut down I think there is a reason and there's the reasons I have listed out I'm not saying I hate this movie I actually more to Words, leaning towards indifferent about this movie because I think I came into this movie looking to watch Harley Quinn to see if there was really a base for her solo movie and after coming out there wasn't really I'm sorry Harley Quinn I love you but it was mostly explained in this movie I'm sorry but I Maybe, you know, to prove me wrong, you could make a Joker movie because I really want to know where you guys are going with the Joker because the Joker is also one of the characters that I love and I don't know, man. I just don't like this type of Joker. Like, it does not necessarily make sense. Like, He's not that over the top. He's also got his own class, his own, his own psychology, like his own psychology. I'm sorry, I went full time there. Um, like his own psychology or his own motto. Like, he wants to kill the Batman, but at the same time, he also wants to see how the Batman does. Like, it's very philosophical. I think with the with the Joker. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe an Enchantress movie to prove me wrong as well. I don't know, but like Enchantress, I thought she was too much of that like witch doctor thing, like with the helmet and everything. But maybe that's in the comic though. Uh, I thought her powers were pretty amazing. I'm not gonna lie. Like, she's, uh, she's like um, what am I thinking of now? The X-Men that can like teleport here and there. I forgot his name now. Uh, uh, you'll, you'll tell me. Um, but there are a lot of things that were good and were alright. So I'd still give this a 6.6 .6, I think out of 10. Um, barring to, you know, Batman v Superman which was like 6 for me. And after the ultimate edition was still 6.1 or something, 6.2. Um, yeah, man. It was kind of a letdown, though. But I was still alright with it, I think. It's hard to explain because I really wanted to be like, oh my god. The critics were wrong, shut down Rotten Tomatoes, you know, al along with them who said like, Oh, oh Rotten Tomatoes against DC and nothing else, and uh, we should not accept Rotten Tomatoes anymore, because uh, disregard everything that they've gotten by with all the other movies. This one, no, no, they got it wrong. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who was, I don't know who was impressing there, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's about it, and uh, see you guys next time, bye.